Simplicity is one of New Zealand's leading fund managers with over 150,000 investors, $6.2 billion under management, and a mission to charge low fees to New Zealand investors. In this video, I'll be covering the background of Simplicity and the funds that they provide. Make sure to subscribe down below to see more content just like this. Let's get into it. Simplicity was founded back in 2016 by Kiwi Sam Stubbs. He has worked around the world in various finance roles, including Faye Richwhite, Goldman Sachs, Hanover, and Tower investments. Simplicity was founded on its non-profit principles. They charge low fund management fees to investors and donate 15% of this to their foundation, named of course the Simplicity Foundation. To date, they've raised over $8 million, offered as grants to serve four pillars, environment, youth development, education, and homelessness and hunger. They've also planted over 150,000 trees across the country, sequestering over 35,000 tonnes of carbon. They also practice ethical investing, avoiding investments in a range of sectors. These include fossil fuels, alcohol, tobacco, gambling, weapons, adult entertainment, and nuclear power. They also avoid companies that don't comply with the UN Global Compact principles around human rights, labour, environment, and anti-corruption principles. Simplicity Simplicity is also active in the first home buyer space. First, they operate Simplicity Living, which builds high quality but affordable apartments and townhouses for long-term rent. The yield from these properties is paid to investors across many of their funds. It also provides a better yield than other fixed income investments such as bank deposits and bonds. The second offering is through Simplicity First Home Loans, offering a super low 6.4% floating rate to first home buyers. On the open market right now, banks are charging upwards of 8.6% for a similar product. Again, this allows Simplicity to get better returns for its investors than bank deposits and bonds, but it also benefits first-home buyers by saving literally thousands of dollars in interest each year. So they charge low fees, are a non-profit and donate back to society, help first-home buyers, and only invest in companies that are good for society. As I covered earlier, Simplicity currently manages $6.2 billion, which is a very decent size in New Zealand. This is composed of both KiwiSaver and non-KiwiSaver funds. Their KiwiSaver scheme offers six funds across a range of risk profiles. On every $1,000 that you invest, they take just $2.50 as management fees, which is extremely low and represents an annual fee of just 0.25%. ASB for comparison, charges between 0.35 and 1%, making Simplicity up to four times cheaper than a large bank's program. Over on the non-KiwiSaver side, Simplicity offers 11 funds, with five of these overlapping with the KiwiSaver program. The fees on these are even lower, between just 0.1 and 0.25%. So let's take a look at their funds, starting with the KiwiSaver ones. We'll start with the default KiwiSaver fund. When you start with KiwiSaver, if you don't decide which fund you want to be in, it's likely you will be in this one. It has a mix of 59% growth assets and 41% income assets and charges an annual fee of 0.25%. This is four times lower than the market average for this type of fund. Growth assets are those that we expect to grow in price, such as stocks, while income assets, of course, pay us an income such as savings accounts, term deposits, and bonds. Income assets are considered safer than growth assets, but over the long run are expected to generate a lower return. With a large weighting towards growth assets for this fund, Simplicity recommends an investment time frame of at least six years. As KiwiSaver is meant to accumulate over a working career, this shouldn't be a concern for most. This 59% weighting is split into 43.5% international shares, and 15.5% local, the remaining 41% in income assets is split 22.5% international, 16.5% local, and 2% cash. With vast diversification, this fund contains over 4,000 investments in more than 20 countries. This is important so that we don't have all of our eggs in a single basket. Over the past year, the fund has generated a return of just under 10%, and Simplicity gives it a risk score of 4 out of 7, which is about in the middle. As I mentioned earlier, this is a default fund for savers, and we'll now move on to the more crafted funds serving different risk tolerances. First up, we have the defensive KiwiSaver fund, which mainly invests in safer income assets. This 95% weighting is broken down into 44% local fixed income investments, 36% international, and 15% cash. 
The final 5% is invested in unlisted property assets through their Simplicity Living Arm. This fund charges a 0.25% fee, and the suggested investment time frame is 2 years. As a defensive fund, it targets investors that want very low risk and minimal volatility. I myself used the defensive fund when I was waiting for my first home withdrawal, so I had the confidence that my balance wouldn't fall from where it was at the time. The performance of this fund has slipped in recent months, and has a risk rating of just 3 from 7. Many it's well on the safer end of the scale. Second, we have the conservative KiwiSaver fund that dabbles a wee bit more into growth assets. It steps up from the previous fund's 5% in growth assets to 23%, comprising 17% international, 3.5% local, and 2.5% in unlisted property. The remaining 77% is split between 42% international fixed income, 33% local, and 2% cash. This fund charges 0.25% a year in fees, and the suggested investment time frame is 3 years. This fund has been around a bit longer than the defensive fund, and has generated modest returns in line with its lower risk profile. Over the past year it generated 4.3% returns, 2 years 2.2% and 5 years 1.8%. It carries a still relatively low risk profile of 4 out of 7 and is targeted towards a lower risk tolerance investor. Third up is the balanced fund, which is basically the same as the default fund. It has virtually the same profile as this fund, and as we covered earlier, it has a higher growth asset profile than the conservative fund, increasing from a 23% weighting to 59% which is reflected in the higher average returns. Over the past year, it generated a return of 9.6%, two years 5.4%, and five years 5.3%. So this fund targets investors wanting a mix of both income and growth assets. Fourth up is the Growth KiwiSaver Fund, which invests 80% of the money in growth assets and just 20% in income assets. To reflect its higher risk and volatility to investors, the suggested investment time frame is 9 years. And while the market charges an average annual fee of 1.14% for this type of fund, Simplicity again charges just 0.25%. The growth assets are split into 59% international shares. 16.5% local, and 4.5% unlisted property. The income assets are 10.5% international, 7.5% local, and 2% cash. Here we can see where the majority of funds are invested, with shares like Microsoft and Apple ranking highly. Simplicity Living is up there too, which is the unlisted property portion of the fund. Local Kiwi companies like Fisher & Paykel Healthcare, Auckland Airport, and Spark feature too. Going back to the fund, it has generated a one-year return of 12.8% two-year of 7.4% and five-year of 7.3%. For the added risk, it has a risk profile of five out of seven. And finally, we have the High Growth KiwiSaver Fund, which has a 98% weighting towards growth assets and just 2% sitting as cash. This 98% comprises 73% international shares, 15% local and 10% in unlisted property. Fees charged are 0.25%. As we've seen across all the KiwiSaver funds, the minimum suggested investment time frame is 10 years. When we see where this fund is investing, it gets pretty exciting. We can see household stocks creeping in, as well as Simplicity Living, but if you look closely, there's even some private equity in there. To date, Simplicity has invested over $36 million into six Kiwi companies. This includes Venture Capital House, Ice House Ventures, and Tax Traders. Jumping back into the fund, it hasn't been around so long, so the returns information is very limited. For the past three months, it has generated a return of 3.7%, which isn't bad at all. On the risk scale, it sits at a 5 out of 7. So that rounds out the KiwiSaver funds. Simplicity also offers 11 funds to regular investors outside of the KiwiSaver scheme. Five of these overlap with the KiwiSaver scheme, so we'll skip over those and go straight into their Homes and Income Investment Fund. This fund offers investors a chance to put their money into housing assets. As we covered earlier, that is Simplicity's first home loan arm, and their built to rent Simplicity living arm. It also requires a minimum $1,000 investment and charges an annual fee of 0.25%. This fund has an interesting allocation that it discloses will take some time to build up as there is a lot of work required to build the home and attract the mortgage volumes. 25% of the funds are intended for growth assets, namely the rental properties through the Simplicity Living Arm. The remaining 75% will be divided into 40% cash. 
10% community housing bonds and 25% residential mortgages through their Simplicity First Home Loans. This fund targets those that want to invest in New Zealand's housing sector, both for income and capital gains. It has generated positive returns over its short life so far and has a low risk profile of just three out of seven. Now, if we move to Simplicity's other investment funds, we have five single sector funds. These are less diversified as compared to the risk-based funds that we covered earlier, as they have a limited scope to invest. Starting with the New Zealand Share Fund, as the name suggests, it invests solely in New Zealand shares. It charges a super low annual fee of just 0.1% per annum, or a dollar for every $1,000 invested. The New Zealand stock market has underperformed in recent years, with very slight growth over the past one and two years. Over the past five years, it has averaged a return of just 4%. On the risk scale, it has a 5 out of 7. Alongside the New Zealand Share Fund is the New Zealand Bond Fund, which charges an annual fee of 0.1% per annum. This fund invests in New Zealand government bonds of all durations. On the performance side of things, it has been a really poor performer but that's the nature of investing in government bonds. The fund has a risk rating of four out of seven. Next is the Hedged Global Share Fund, charging an annual fee of 0.15%. This fund invests in the thousand companies from 20 countries exclusively outside of New Zealand. The fund itself is hedged, which means the investment returns reflect the investment alone and don't include the impact of foreign exchange movements. Simplicity also offers an unhedged version of this fund, which I'll cover shortly. This fund invests in big names stocks from around the world, such as Microsoft, Apple, NVIDIA, Google, and the likes. Its returns have been healthy too, increasing over 20% over the past year. On the risk side, it has a rating of 6. Next is the unhedged version of the fund, also charging a fee of 0.15%. As the New Zealand dollar has depreciated against the US dollar in the past year, the returns are higher for the unhedged fund, sitting at 24% over the past year. Oddly, the risk profile of the unhedged fund sits at a lower 5 on the risk scale. And finally, we have the Hedged Global Bond Fund, charging fees of 0.15%. It invests in over 3,500 bonds from more than 20 countries, mainly US Treasuries. The returns have been low over the past year, sitting at just 0.45%, and this fund has a risk grade of just a 4 out of 7. So that wraps up the video. If you like this video and want to see more just like it, make sure to subscribe to my channel down below. If you're a member of Simplicity and want to share your experience with them, make sure to drop a comment down below. Below. Thanks for watching and I look forward to catching you on the next one. Cheers.